you want to take reference photos like this and turn them into vibrant, life-giving, abstract portraits like this, then stick around. I'll be sharing my easy to follow seven step process for choosing and placing color. All right, guys, let's get started. Hello, my name is Lauren Elizabeth. If you're new here, I'm a pet and wildlife artist and instructor, and I spent all of 2022 now doing what I call a 365 days of color. It's a challenge that I set for myself to paint, draw, color every single day for at least 10 minutes a day, but it's really pushed me to figure out which are the best colors to use. There are some colors that are more ideal than others, and that's what we'll be talking about today. So before I go over my seven step process for choosing and placing color, I wanna explain three things. So when I'm talking about realistic colors, I mean the actual color of the animal. So like the real life colors that we're seeing in the reference photo or of the animal itself. And then the abstract colors are the real life colors that we alter in some way. This is semi-realism, a style that's both abstract and both realistic. So I really try to keep to proportions and make the animal look pretty accurate, but really alter color in a very creative, vibrant way. And lastly, it's really important for these steps to make sense that you have a strong grasp on color value. So if you don't really know or you need a little refresher, this will help. So to find the value, instead of asking yourself, what color is this? Ask yourself, how light is this color? Or how dark is this color? Or is this right there in the middle? So if I was looking at a caramel colored dog, I would ask myself, is this a dark caramel brown? Or is this a light caramel brown? Or is it a medium value? caramel brown. <laughs> all right, so now that we have all those things squared away, I'm gonna use this snow leopard painting that I completed and we'll go over these easy seven steps. Let's go. All right, so step one is to identify the realistic colors. Again, these are the real life colors. So if I were to make this a realistic looking snow leopard, I would use black and white in varying gray tones. I'd also see hints of yellow ochre mixed with some raw sienna around the mane and permanent red with burnt umber and white for the nose. Now this can be altered quite a bit and still look like real life colors depending on the artist. So there's still a lot of wiggle room here, but those are the colors that I would choose. Next, step two, determine how you want to alter those realistic colors to get your abstract colors. I find that it's so much easier to plan out my abstract colors when I've first determined the more real life colors, the realistic colors. So for this snow leopard, I decided instead of using all gray, I would use some gray and blend it in with some violets on the left side facing the light source, mixed in with some yellow ochre to complement those violets. Then I would use grays blended in and also layered in with some phthalo blue on the right side, complemented with some oranges and some more browns as well. To get that orange, I mixed in some fluorescent pink with yellow. That's kind of a trademark in my paintings. I love that combination anywhere I can squeeze in pink. So this method starts with the realistic colors and then very gradually you blend the paint into your more abstract colors or and or layer them in. This helps me to connect colors throughout my painting and planning them in advance helps us to pair colors the best way. So like here we, I combined complementary yellow with violet as well as orange with my blues. So in finding those abstract colors, not only do you wanna think of how you can alter those realistic colors, you also wanna consider some other color schemes. So if I were to go with a monochromatic color scheme for this painting, I would start with my grays and then move to a blue gray and then a lighter blue gray and then even darker blue grays for this entire face. Or I could use a split complementary color scheme where the left side of the face can be all yellows and yellow oranges. And then the right side, instead of being just blue and orange, it could be violet and blue blending all four of those colors in with different grays. So there you go, there's your abstract colors and your realistic colors. Next is step three, where we apply our darkest value layers. 
So step three through six really focuses on the relative lightness and darkness of a color, the color value. Nowadays, I like to focus on one area at a time. So I'll work on one eye or I'll work on one side of the face at a time and I'll apply the darkest value realistic colors and the darkest value abstract colors. That leads me to step four. I'll blend and or layer those into my medium value colors. Oftentimes to get those colors, I'll either add white to my dark values or I'll add a lighter color to increase the value so they become lighter. Technically, according to color theory, you're increasing the value by adding white to a color and decreasing value by adding black. But I like to add in more color by either adding white or a lighter color value to transition from my dark values to my medium values to my light values. And that leads me to step five. You apply your light value layers. So these are very abstract light colors. Usually by step five and six, I'm going all abstract in color. Now in this snow leopard painting, I got the left side covered, the white covered up, but all the layers are not completed on that side. I still have more layers to go, but I moved to the right side because my main goal at the beginning is to cover up the white. So it looks a little choppy. There's definitely layers of dark medium lights missing, but I try to keep up that momentum and not get held up on detail at the beginning. I leave that for the middle and end. And you'll see by step seven why this makes sense. So before seven is six. And in step six, we add our accent colors. I also call them distorted colors sometimes. These are just little dabs of color here and there that accidentally blended on my canvas or colors that are already there that I just want to pull out even more and make those pop. You'll see here in a minute that I turn that dull tannish yellow on the left ear into a vibrant yellow and then the orange that you see in the lower right hand on the right side main, I turn that into a peach color again with my yellow and my fluorescent pink to complement the greens in this mossy stone that I'm painting right now. And the last step, step seven, is to repeat the rounds of values. So you repeat the rounds of all those colors I've gone over, making any small tweaks to color or trying to get the relative lightness or darkness just right, seeing if you uh, need any more joiner colors. Those are the medium values that help us connect the dark values to the light values. I stress this a lot in the masterclass because medium values help us to fill in the gaps. They really make the painting look more three-dimensional and that's how we can move from the ugly phase, like I like to call it, to a finished masterpiece. Now I promise this process is actually a lot easier than you think because there's not just one direction you can take in color, there's several. That's really how color theory works. It's both an art and a science. Now everything that I've just gone over here is actually in my new and improved creative color guide. I have just been pouring so much of what I've been learning this year through my color challenge into this guide. It's finally completed. It's a four step video and ebook guide that goes over how to pull out your color style, how to match value over color. It includes my master tips for blending and layering color, my seven step process that we just went over and much more detail using other examples how to put together a color scheme, how to prepare your color palette. It includes three masterclass tutorials. And by the way, this entire guide is already in the masterclass, but it's also available one-time payment on its own on my website. I have a link to that creative color guide down below. But guys, if you have any questions at all, or even more topics that you'd like me to talk about and create into a video on my channel, I'd love to get your feedback. And if this video was helpful, make sure you like and subscribe if you already haven't. You will be seeing more 365 days of color updates, guys, because I'm in year two now. The challenge is not over. I'm gonna continue this challenge. The main differences from last year with this challenge is number one, I'll be raising money for at-risk animals and children. That you can find a link to more details on the my daily blog for the challenge, link down below. And also I'll be attempting different mediums. So dabbling more in watercolor, oil painting, uh, colored pencil, 
even some pastels, but of course with a focus on acrylic painting. All right, so you can watch this snow leopard here until the end. There's only a little bit more. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye! Thank you.